Are you ready to praise God this morning? Are you ready? Let's get to our feet this morning to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We got the youth group doing worship today. Huh? There we go. The youth right here. The youth. Huh? The youth. The youths. The youths. But we want to welcome the youth here today. Give them a nice hand. Everybody just help them uh, be encouraged to worship the Lord because uh, our days are numbered. This is tomorrow's church right here. And not too far from tomorrow either. Right here. So we're going to worship the King of Kings. And we had so much fun the other Sunday. We're going to do this again. Who wants to trade their sorrows for the joy of the Lord today? Huh? If you're serious, give the Lord a shout this morning. Come on. to the Lord every time needs to be yes. And we're going to ask for forgiveness this morning because a lot of times the Lord is calling out 
to us to do something and we say no. Which is disobedience. Who wants to be obedient to the Lord today? So the answer is just like First Hawaiian Bank, it's yes. You know, they say that they're the bank that says yes. We are God's people that should say yes every single time when the Lord comes a calling. Because He knows better than we do what we need and what we deserve. And if you really break it down, we all deserve death because of our sin. But because of His mighty grace and His love for us, we can say yes, Lord, because He did it all for us on the cross. Everybody say yes! yes. Oh yeah, very good. I don't know if you're convinced though. I think you've got to sing it louder than that and really mean it. You're shouting out yes to God. Now, I don't know what you're saying yes to right now, so really pray about it. Some of you, he's calling out to preach the word. Some of us, or you are being called out to do missions. Some of you are being called out to be teachers, prophets, singers, and dancers for the Lord. See ya. One more time. See it. Yeah. Oh yeah. One more time. See it. Yeah. All right. All right. There's still some of you that's not convinced. So we're gonna do something here. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, "Wake up! Wake up! Come on, a little bit louder. Wake up!" Wake up. One more time. Wake up. Joy is here. 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 Wake up. Joy is I'm training. I'm training my sorrow. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. All right, let's take this thing home. Sing it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Come on, sing it again. Raise your hand in the air. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. All right, bring it down again. You thought we were going to end. We're not going to end. We're going to keep going. Because I have some truths. I have some truths. Everybody say truths. Truth. I say there's some truths I gotta sing before we end this song. Are you ready for the truth from God? This is right out of His Word, right here. Listen carefully. Here we go. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure. Joy is gonna come. And be my strength. No sorrow may last through the night. His joy comes in the morning. Woo! I'm trading my sorrow. Yeah. I'm trading my chains. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my days. I'm laying this down for the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Everybody say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Woo! Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen.
God this morning. Come on. Oh, we can do that one all day. Yes, all day. All day. All day. All day. All day. All day. You know, no matter how long we walk with the Lord, for me personally, He's continuing to reveal to me how good He is. And I don't think we'll ever come to the, the fullness of His goodness to us until we are with Him in eternity. And I think every day we seek His face, He reveals to us more and more how good He is to us. So as we sing this, let's remember how good our Father is. You know, some of us, or some of you out there, I don't know what you've been through in your past. Maybe you've been hurt by your dad, your earthly one. Some of us maybe uh, are sitting in the, the chairs today. Maybe you've been abused even, verbally, mentally, even physically. Can I just tell you right now that when you receive Jesus Christ, You are a new creation. And you are reborn into a family that will never let you down. And your father here on earth, he does the best he could. But we now serve a father that is perfect in every way. And it says that our father now will never leave us nor forsake us. And if our earthly fathers love us so much that they try and give us the best they could, guess what? Our heavenly father will give us exactly what we need. And then some. Because he came to not only give life, but give life abundantly. So let's celebrate our good, good father. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you but I heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell the end of seasons that I'm never alone. I can hardly think as you go. 
Father, thank you for being a good, good father to us, Lord. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways, God. Perfect with all of your ways. I don't think we comprehend that. So when you agree or disagree with what God is doing, He is perfect. So is it God that needs to adjust to us? No. It's us who need to adjust to God. Because He's a perfect, perfect God. God, I pray for your children in this house, Lord. Not all of us have it all together, even though we may look like it on the outside, Lord. Some of us are broken. Hallelujah. Some of us are sick. Some of us are battling things that we don't know how to fight it, Lord. And we're asking you to be the fighter for us. You know what? You've done that already on the cross. Yes, God. Do you? We have the victory. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us of that, Father. Father, hear our hands. They may be bonded, hear our hearts that may be bonded, Father. But in the name of Jesus, I ask that you come down and you break those bonds, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, sister. Those bonds of pain, of depression, of hurt. Those bonds of unforgiveness that is in us, Lord. And I would say there's those bonds of lust, sexual immorality, the bonds of the lust for money, Father. Yes, Lord. I ask that you break it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Break it and cleanse, you. cleanse your house, Father. Yes, Lord. Walk through the aisle, Jesus. Walk through the aisle. Church, lay it all before him. Stretch out your hands. Let him break it. He won't do it unless you let him. Jesus asking, will you let me take control? Will you let me break it for you? Those chains are too tight. Let me break it. Call on his name. Call on his name. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
free you from your bondage this morning. He's breaking every chain. Do you see it? Do you see it? God, and I pray for all of us who need the chains to be broken, Father God, that you've already broken them, Father God. Some of these chains that we put are put there by ourselves, God. Father, we don't even want to give Satan too much credit. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. But Father God, we have chains that, that are of the flesh, and we also have chains that are of the spirit. So, Father God, in the spirit today, in the name of Jesus, God, this is where our warfare is. It's not in flesh and blood, but it's with principalities. Let me tell you something. If you've been struggling this past week, it's been one of those weeks where you feel the opposition. Every time you want to head towards God, there's, there's something that trips you up. There's something that distracts you. There's something that wants to pull you back. Can I say that your God is more powerful than your distraction? Your God is more powerful than, than anything that, that is attractive to you. Our God should be the most attractive thing. We should be led to Him daily. So Father God, I pray over my brothers and sisters right now, God who just had one of those weeks that we need to just shed the, 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 this, this heavy skin off of us today, God. Because sometimes when we're bombarded by things of work, 
So even things of our family, even good things. Father, sometimes we build a layer of numbness. Father, we want to feel today. We want to rejoice today. We want to cry today. We want to be moved by you today. So strip away those chains. Strip away the callousness of the hearts. Father, strip away those layers, those layers that, that we put up to protect ourselves. But Father God, you want the very innermost part of us. So transform us today by worship. Transform us today by our fellowship and the synergy of the Holy Spirit with other believers. Transform us by your word today, God, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen, Amen. 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 Would you give the Lord a clap offering this morning and thank Him. Now can you turn to two or three people, give them a big hug and say, you got a good, good father. You got a good, good father. Woo! Hi, Katie. And then you can be seated. Can everybody please help me thank the worship team this morning? Got some of our youth here. Elijah, Cameron, and Chloe, one of our young leaders in Loke, and of course, the mighty Pocho, one of the pillars of our church. I'm not even going to call you an elder, bro. You and younger. But as we prepare for the tithes and offering, I want to just encourage you to keep in this worshipful state because it's all about giving ourselves to God. Amen? See, we're just uh, kind of talking about this. When we come to the realization of Jesus Christ, some of us have a different degree of surrender to Him. Because sometimes, if not all the time, see, our, our, our transformation is based on how much we surrender to Him. The more we decide to keep for ourselves the things of the flesh, then maybe transformation might take a little bit longer. So I just ask you today to surrender to God. Because the more we surrender to Him, the more we trust Him, the more we abide. Everybody say abide. abide. That means to live in, fuse together. The more we abide in Jesus Christ. Everybody see the cross? I can't see it. Because I cannot look at your elbow. You ever try looking at your elbow? <laughs> Anyway, abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. This is a reminder to everybody that sees me raise my hand to Jesus that He is my source in the middle of everything. Because when I stretch my arm out this way, He has the compass to show you the way. So Lord, we just surrender to you as we give of the tithes and offering, Father God. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. And Father, we're not only talking about our finances. Of course, Father, this is the time where we trust you with our finances, God. And, and we uh, test <laughs> this spiritual principle. And, I, and believe me, it, it, is, it is a leap of faith almost every Sunday, right? <laughs> uh, especially for a lot of us who, who live paycheck to paycheck. We trust God with everything. But can I tell you this again? That when you trust in God, He never leaves you hanging. In fact, He provides for what you need and then some. We serve a God of then some. We ask for something in our prayer. He gives it to us if it's in His will and then some. Amen. So we trust in you today, God. As we continue this worship time and the giving of our tithes and offering. And we just say, Lord, multiply it. Multiply it to reach those who don't know you, God. In our homes, in our families. We're in Acts 1-8 church. So we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to do it. To empower us. To be witnesses in our homes. Okay, while the buckets are going around. Everybody repeat after me. We will be witnesses in our homes. Our homes. 
in our community, in the state of Hawaii, and around the world. That's what this church is about. Powered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses in our homes, community, the state of Hawaii, for the people here and for the ends of the earth. Acts 1.8. So Lord, as we give today, use those resources to really push your kingdom forward in our homes, our community, our state, and around the world through our global missions, Father. And as we trust in you, Father God, I ask that you provide for the giver 30, 60, 100 times what he needs, he or she needs. Provide for my family, Father God, for everything, God, that sustains us. You are our provider. And you know what's best for us. So, Father, we surrender to you. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thanks, ushers. We're going to do something special right now. I want to welcome all the Kiki. Where's the Kiki? We've got a few Kiki here. And we're going to have the youth stay in with us this service. I want to just speak to the Kiki right now. Kiki, worship is very important. When you see mommy and daddy, uncle and auntie, Pastor Sam and the worship team jumping up and down and yelling and singing and dancing, that's our heart expressing our love for Jesus. Amen? Amen, Amen kids? Yeah? And it's important not only to give worship like that, but we, we do the tithes and offering. That's worship too when we give God what we have. But we also express worship in other ways like dance and other expressions that give our love and glory to God. I'd like to bring up to the platform this morning my wife, Jamie. This is Pastor Jamie right here. This goes not only for the keiki, but to all of us here. Sometimes we don't understand the ways of God. And I believe this is a word given to my wife just now for all of us. For even, especially, those things we don't understand about God, we need to turn it over to Him today. For the things we don't understand, turn it over to God today. We'll express our worship to Him to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are a living hope. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. My heart becomes free, and my shame is undone. Your i 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, just give him thanks right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Wow. Woo! I forgot where we was. Where we stay? Where we stay? Thought I was in heaven, you know what? Wow. A few announcements before we get the uh, sermon started, everybody. Hey, um, we can excuse the cakey now. Yeah, cakey. Uh, youth is going to stay in-house today. Because they need to hear the message. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. The youths. Thank you. Thank you, Keiki. But um, we got some announcements. Don't forget that we gather every Wednesday night at 888 Evelay, right down the street for our midweek service, which includes worship and prayer and 
breaking the word apart. It's a discussion format, so everybody gets a chance to read the word and, and ask questions and go deeper. And it's such a rich, rich, rich time. Um, also, uh, what else we got? Next Step, March 29th. Next Step Shelter, March 29th. Mark it on your calendar. It's going to be a Tuesday night this month. Uh, we switched it up because... Uh, uh, a lot of our leaders are going through a, a discipleship class, so we moved it to March 29th. It's a Tuesday night, and um, if you want to help by bringing food, or if you just want to show up to serve, we need all the help we can get, so please show up. It's the Tuesday after Easter, so you should be all inspired. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> should have the resurrection power inside your heart. Speaking about Easter, we have a fantastic Easter service planned on March 27th. Live in, in uh, doing like a mini Easter concert for us are the Sons of Yeshua. Now this is a, a anointed, powerful band, uh, a reggae style. Actually, they do a lot of styles. But they're going to come and throw it down for us, especially. Um, they're making their Easter available to come here to bless you. So invite your family, your friends, especially um, people may, that may not know the Lord Jesus in your family, uh, but love reggae music. That's always the door. You know, we're going to skank over here. You ever seen me skank? Dude, I, I skank. Dude. Like how? Like how? Huh? You like me sample? No push me to skank, but I skank. So Sons of Yeshua plus two very powerful testimonies from uh, members of this very church right here. So uh, come and experience the resurrection power of Jesus on March 27. Now don't forget, invite your family and friends because I think it's going to be a powerful time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Right on. All right. It's time for the word. You ready for the word? Yay! All right. Let me turn on the switch. Just like we got, if you don't turn on the switch, oh yeah, you know can hear him clearly. Hallelujah. Let there be. There it is, right there. All right, all right. We want to thank you all for coming, especially our our special guests. We got Jamie's brother John and his wife Chrissy and Destiny here. Um, they're leaving actually tonight back to their home in Arizona. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I know you don't like Ovan. He was trying to convince Chrissy. I know it. I bet you. Any money. Yesterday. Babe, I can just find one job. You can just move to Queens. And we can work them out. And, and then Destiny can come play volleyball for UH. Yeah. Woo! I raise your mind. I get the kind about ESPN. <laughs> but we want to just uh, bless them today. and. Yeah. Um, just thank them for, for coming to our service, uh, taking time, and I hope God bless your time here. And also Jamie's uh, family is here, Jamie's mom, Val, brother uh, Howard, and uh, just a gang. Well, I don't like call them by his nickname. <laughs> well, but he will get mad. But um, it's a special Sunday. You see, we have the youth. It always encourages me when I see teenagers worshiping God. Amen. Amen. Because, uh, you know what? I mean, they're growing in the Lord. That's, that's all we can ask. And, and our job is to disciple them and to show them the way. Yeah? Children are our future. Yeah. Lift them up. Let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay but it's a special Sunday and it encourages me to do that and we're going to continue in our, our message series called Road to Salvation and you know we, we are finding there is a common denominator in all of these stories on the way to Calvary Jesus is very intentional about where he goes and in our lives he is very intentional about what he does to us as well and like the word Jamie gave me this for all of us today is even the things we don't understand, we give to him. Yes. We give to him. And sometimes, and I bet, and you're going to find in today's story that even his disciples were baffled at the things that Jesus did. What is this guy doing? 
Right? Jesus' ways are not our ways. But if we surrender to him, we don't question him because he knows what is best. And that goes the same for our lives this morning. Let me tell you a story about a local fitness center. You know the kind like BJ Penn or 24 Hour Fitness? It's kind of like that. They were offering $1,000 to anyone who could demonstrate that they were stronger than the owner of the place. So here's how it works. This muscle man, not me, would squeeze a lemon, yeah? Squeeze a lemon until all the juice ran into the glass. And then he would hand the lemon to the next challenger. Anyone who could squeeze just one more drop of juice would win the money. Okay? So many people tried. Over and over. Weightlifters, bodybuilders, construction workers, even professional wrestlers. But nobody could do it. One day, the short skinny guy comes walking in. <laughs> oh God, let's sign up for you guys got this. So after the laughter in the gym died down, the owner grabbed the lemon and squeezed away. <laughs> then he handed the wrinkled, what was left of the remains of a lemon to this scrawny little man. Now the crowd's laughter turned into silence as the man clenched his fist around the lemon and six drops of lemon juice fell into the glass. As the crowd cheered, the manager paid out $1,000 and, and, and he asked the short guy, bro, how you did that? What you do for a living? He go, you want a lumberjack? What, what, what you do? You in mason? You work with your hands? What you do? You in weightlifter? How did you do this? How did you squeeze six more drops out of a fully squeezed out lemon? You go, bro, I work for the IRS. <laughs> Which leads me to my next question. How many of you filed your taxes? You're protesting. I guess we still have a few more weeks, right? Let me get me. To the deadline. Don't be like me. You wait till April 14th to, to file your taxes. And then you rush at the end. Speaking about taxes, isn't it tough to be honest during tax time? Come on now. Here's an actual letter that I found that was written to the, the IRS. And it said this, true story. In close, you will find a check for $150. I cheated on my income. Uh, I cheated on my income tax return last year and I've not been able to sleep ever since. If I still have trouble sleeping, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> This morning, I want to talk to you about a high-ranking IRS official. <laughs> a man who not only cheated on his returns, but he cheated off of everybody else's tax returns. He had figured out a way to skim money off the top and squeeze the last drop from people's wallets. Our passage today has parallels to a lot of uh, the, the, the previous messages this morning. As you recall, when Jesus was approaching Jericho, last week we talked about he had an encounter with a blind man on the side of the road, a poor beggar from the lowest social class. Now as we look at Luke 19.1, 
If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke 19.1. Anybody need a Bible? I think we have a couple up here that you can use this morning. Anybody need one? Anybody want to use one? Chloe wants to use one. Good girl, Chloe. <laughs> Share with your brothers. <laughs> turn to Luke 19, verse 1. I titled this message, I was telling my mom earlier, I should have invited my dad to this, today's message, because it's called Small Man, <laughs> Dad, if you watch this on YouTube later, sorry, <laughs> which he does sometimes, praise the Lord, Small Man, Big God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So as you recall, last week we ran into uh, the blind man on the side of the road and Jesus was passing through Jericho and on his final trip to Jerusalem, he comes in contact with a man named Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus was on the opposite end of the social class. Zacchaeus was loaded. He was very wealthy. He was a wealthy government man from the top rung of the economic ladder. And I'll explain a little bit more about him. Um, in the whole country, there were three regions. And Zacchaeus was like the director of one of the regions. So this guy wasn't even... I mean, he, he, he had people under him. And then people under them. So by the time he collected the money, he was collecting from everybody. I don't know, so it kind of sounds like a multi-level... Anyway. But our story starts in, in Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. And you know, I'm going to read the whole thing and then we'll break it down as we go. Everybody ready? ready. You can follow along in your Bibles or if you want to read word for word, you can read... Uh, with me along on the screen this morning. It says this, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector. He wasn't just no regular tax collector. He was the chief tax collector in the region. And he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus. But he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore fig tree beside the road. For Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came, he looked up at Zacchaeus. Now check this out. And called him by name. He said, Zacchaeus. Quick. Come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. Now we're talking about things that we don't understand God is doing. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Everybody say seek and save. Seek and save. Not, not sack and save. <laughs> Jesus came to seek and save. It's a special, uh, pretty simple outline today. I'm going to talk about short sinner, but searching. The next... Part of this sermon will be about big...